good boy. Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you step by step how to make pulled pork in the Weber kettle. All right, so we'll get started by going through the meat. Now we've picked up this beautiful pork scotch from Austral Meats. I love using pork scotch because it's boneless and it doesn't need much trimming. You could use something like a pork shoulder as well. They make great pulled pork too. But for now, we'll get started by giving the meat a trim. All right, so we're gonna get started by getting rid of any excess hard fat, any little silver skin and grisly bits, and any thinner parts of the meat as well. So we're gonna have a look at both sides. The bottom looks pretty good. Just got a little bit there we'll trim off. So I don't think we really need to touch the bottom, but we'll get started by trimming this top stuff. All right, so as you can see, that was a pretty quick and easy trim. You don't get much wastage on them pork scotches and how sharp was that knife? That's the first time I've used it. That's the Dow Strong six inch utility knife. I'll chuck a link down in the description if you wanna check it out. And I'll also put a discount code there for you as well. You can get 10% off of the Dow Strong range using that code. So now our meat's trimmed. We're gonna go ahead and make a nice, quick, easy, and simple homemade rub to go on our pork scotch. All right, so in a shaker or a bowl, we're gonna start with two tablespoons of brown sugar. One, two. And then we're gonna go one tablespoon of kosher salt, and then half a tablespoon of smoked paprika, and then around a quarter of a tablespoon of onion powder, and half a tablespoon of cracked black pepper. And then we're gonna put our lid on, put the top on, and give it all a shake. All right, so now our rub's made, our next step is to give the pork scotch a nice light coat in mustard. That's just gonna help bind the rub to the meat. And then we're gonna give the meat a nice light coat in our rub. So we'll get going on that. All right, so our meat's sorted. We're gonna put it aside for about 10 or 15 minutes while we set up the Weber. And today, we're gonna to be using the snake method. All right, for those of you who haven't seen the snake method before, we'll run through it quickly now. But if you wanna see a bit more of an in-depth video, I'll link one in the description where we go through a few different setups in the Weber a bit more in depth. But basically, we've created a two by two stack of briquettes. If you're using larger briquettes, you might be able to get away with a two by one through the middle. We've created them in a domino fashion, so they're just gonna burn slowly through throughout the day. And we're gonna start the snake by putting 12 red hot Ashdover briquettes at the start. We're gonna put our vent in the complete open position, and we're gonna have our top vent on the lid completely open, and we're just gonna regulate our temperature by adjusting the bottom vent only. We're gonna be aiming to cook this at about that 275 Fahrenheit or 135 degrees Celsius range. We're gonna start closing down that bottom vent once we get to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93-ish degrees Celsius. And that should help us stabilize it off at our desired cooking temp. Got our foil tray there ready. Got some beautiful peach chunks from Natural Smoke. That'll give us a nice sweet flavor on the pork. So for now, we'll get our snake ready, let our pit come up to temp, and then we'll get the pork in. All right, so if you don't have a thermometer on the lid of your Weber, you can always put one of these probes in on your cooking grate and that'll help you understand what temperature your Weber's gonna be at. That steak that we've set up is gonna last about eight to 10 hours. This is probably gonna be about a six hour cook, but I always like to just go that little bit longer just in case. And if you don't use it, you can always stop the snake and separate your unburnt charcoal to use it again in the future. So for now, we're just gonna wait for our Weber to come up to temp, and then we're gonna get our meat on. All right, so that pork scotch is looking amazing. I love the color of that rub, and I can assure you that the flavor is amazing as well. So it's been about 20 minutes. Our Weber's been sitting at our target temperature of 275 Fahrenheit or 135 Celsius for about the last 10 minutes. So I've just got that bottom vent just open slightly. Our top one is all the way open, and it's gonna stay that way for the whole cook. 
It is gonna drop temperature when we open the lid to put our meat in, but don't worry, it'll come back up and get back to where you were. If it doesn't, just open your bottom vent up a little bit. That's how you're gonna control your temperature through this cook, is you're gonna adjust your bottom vent only. If you need more temperature, open it up. If you need it to drop, close it down so it's only just open a crack. So for now, let's get the meat on. All right, so now our meat's on. I'm not gonna even look at it for about one and a half to two hours. I don't need to, I don't need to lift that lid. All I'm gonna do is keep an eye on our temperatures and make sure they do stabilize off. And the other thing is if you've got another low and slow method that you wanna use, if you've got a slow and sear or a charring or another method, by all means, go for it. I'm just using the snake method because you don't need any accessories and it's pretty quick and easy to set up and you don't need much fuel to get it going. So like I said, for now, we're gonna come back in about one and a half to two hours and then we'll have a look at it. All right, it's been ticking away nicely for about two hours now, so it's time to have a look. All right, that's looking good. The snake's burnt about a third of the way through. Get some nice color on there now. It's looking a little bit dry in some spots. So we'll give it a spritz with some apple cider vinegar. Put the lid back on. All right, so I'm really happy with how that's coming along, starting to get some really nice color on it. So all we're gonna do now is every 45 to 60 minutes, we're gonna hit it with that apple cider vinegar spritz just to keep some moisture in there. And then we're literally just gonna let it go until it reaches that 160 Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius internal. We're gonna also make sure we're happy with the bark and then we're gonna eventually wrap it up in some foil with a bit more apple cider vinegar and some honey for some sweetness. And we're gonna wrap it up nice and tight until we get to around that pulled stage. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it and we'll come back soon. All right, we're about four hours in in total now. I'm happy with that color, happy with the bark. Now it's time to wrap it up in some foil, nice and tight with some honey and a splash of apple cider vinegar. All right, so now our pork scotch is all wrapped up and back in the Weber, we can just let it go again until we reach around that 205 to 210 Fahrenheit or that 96 to 99 degrees Celsius internal mark. That's gonna be our first point of reference. Our second point is gonna be probe tenderness. Now we wanna make sure this thing is probing super tender, no resistance on our probe when we're probing around. That might be around the 205, 96 mark. It might be a bit higher, it might be a bit less. We just don't know, so we're gonna come back later on and check it out. All right, so we're about seven hours in in total now and we are pretty much at our target temperature. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get our instant read thermometer out and we're gonna have a probe around to see how it feels. All right, so it's feeling really nice up this end and hardly any resistance. And as you can see, we're at that 208 Fahrenheit internal, which is about 97-ish degrees Celsius. Getting a little bit of resistance in there, but that's pretty much where I want it to be. I might let it go for another 20 minutes, half an hour. The only bit I'm concerned about is that middle part. So we'll put it back in and let it go for just a little bit longer. All right, it's been another half an hour or so. Time to have another check. It's feeling heaps better already. You can see we're up at about 212 now. So I think that'll do it. So what I'll do now is I'll get it out. I'll leave this foil wrap open so it steams off for 10 minutes and then we'll let it rest for about half an hour at room temperature and then pull it apart. All right, so our pork's all rested. Now it's time to pull it apart.
All right, so now it's time for a taste test. Oh man, that's so good. That's tender, juicy, and full of flavor. If you wanted an extra flavor here, sometimes I'll save the wrap juices and I'll pour it through when I'm pulling the meat and it just gives it a really nice extra level of flavor. If you want some extra sweetness in there, feel free to add some apple juice or barbecue sauce, however you like to eat. But seriously, that's just unbelievably tender and juicy. You can see the juice is running out of it. I'm gonna go get stuck into the rest of this off camera. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.